Well, support for Labor is slipping in WA with the latest news poll finding that the coalition is ahead of Labor in the two-party preferred results. The coalition is up 51% to Labor's 49% in WA, down six points from the election, and it's young people that are driving a lot of this change. Overall, though, the news poll found that Labor is still ahead of the coalition, 52 to 48. Well, joining me now, Headline Advisory Director Andrew Carswell, former media advisor to Scott Morrison, and GXO Strategies Director Cameron Milner, former Chief of Staff to Bill Schott. And great to see you both. And I should mention this, uh, this is our weekly Monday Political Insiders panel. Um, Andrew, how worrying is this result in, for the government? And how significant is it that the coalition could be looking to pick up seats in WA? Well, it's certainly troubling for Anthony Albanese. I mean, they are clearly on the nose in WA. Uh, and this is what happens when you take mining for granted. When you take mining for granted, you take Western Australia for granted. And the people of WA, they're, they're smart people. They've, they've cottoned on to the fact that they're being taken for granted here. And it's having a direct result on the poll numbers over there. I mean, they are in line to lose two seats uh, 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 pretty quickly uh, and going backwards into minority government. Uh, but this is a government that has just decided not to support the mineral sector in any way and, in fact, penalise the mineral sector. They don't, want, they don't even want to acknowledge it. I mean, we have a treasurer who mm. can't really bring himself to even say the word mining. Uh, I mean, if you go through his transcripts of his budget speech, his economic updates, uh, his national accounts press conferences, the last time he mentioned the word mining, September 22. Mm. It's a long time ago. They mm. just do not want to acknowledge it. I mean, in his budget speech, he said he referred to mining as things we send overseas. They can't bring themselves to even say it, let alone support it. And yeah. that is the problem. And you've got industrial relations policy, you've got environmental policies that are going to just push out approvals, bring down investment and, and bring down job creation as a result as well. It's no wonder WA are bolting. Mm -mm. What do you think this means for the general election, Cameron Milner? Well, I mean, they're not only on the nose in Western Australia, they're on the nose in my home state of Queensland too. Uh, federal Labor's not doing what they need to do to win the seats in Queensland, and they're going back in New South Wales as well. So, so it's all heading towards minority government. We're now heading towards a situation where Albanese's first term will look like Gillard's first term, uh, which is a deal with the Greens, uh, which is diabolical, or even worse, mm. a deal with the Teals. Mm. Um, so, mm. no, I mean, Labor should be doing more in office to get their primary up, and they aren't. And we're looking towards a Labor minority government. Albo might be happy to be PM, but it won't be a Labor government and it won't be delivering for Labor families if the Greens are in charge or the Teals. No, absolutely. Now, let's go to uh, our exclusive from Thursday night's show where we revealed that former Home Affairs Secretary Mike Pizzullo has been told that he's going to be stripped of his Order of Australia that was given to him in 2020. Since then, many have thrown their support behind Pizzullo. They've even called for the Prime Minister to intervene and reverse the decision. Shadow Home Affairs as Minister James Patterson said, stripping his AO is incredibly petty. The PM should intervene to stop it. Then just today, Strategic Analysis Australia Director Peter Jennings said that stripping Pizzullo of a deserved Order of Australia awarded four years ago for a significant career in national security is unacceptably punitive. If it happens, the government will claim it's the result of independent processes. Be assured that nothing in Canberra happens unless the Prime Minister wants it. Well, we asked the Prime Minister's office whether Albanese was going to reverse the decision. A government spokesman has told us this is a standard review automatically triggered by the Australian Public Service Commission findings. It is independent from government and still ongoing. Questions about the process should be directed to the Honours Council. So, Andrew, there you go. As Peter Jennings predicted, the Albanese government is saying, oh, nothing to do with us. This is an independent process. Well, Peter Jennings is rarely wrong, um, and he's, he's certainly right on this occasion. I mean, this is just childish. I mean, I'm, I, absolutely, he, you know, Pizzolo showed a, a little bit of an error of judgement in, in cosying up <coughs> for government in the way he did. Uh, but the punishment doesn't fit the crime. Uh, we're talking about little gossipy mess messages being sent on text. It's, it's hardly warranting uh, the removal of such an award. I mean, what you can't take away from Mike Pizzullo is the incredible amount of accomplishment that he achieved as one of Australia's strongest 
uh, public servants in, in, a, in an era where he had to knit together a, a, a monster portfolio department. Uh, when, you know, and, and add to that the fact that he was pivotal in, uh, in Operation Sovereign Borders. I mean, the, the dude uh, deserves his award and more, mm. Uh, mm. and yet it's being stripped away or, or potentially being stripped away by petty politics. Yeah. Look, I went through on Thursday night the reasons, um, you know, the findings against him, so I'm not going to go through the detail of those now, but ultimately, Andrew, you are right. They were gossipy messages with a political lobbyist. Uh, Cameron, most people who have their Order of Australia stripped or other honours stripped, pretty much all of them are where there has been a criminal conviction, you know, serious crimes or pedophilia. The, I mean, it's the complete opposite with Pazulok. Uh, uh, absolutely. Uh Absolutely. And look how good the borders are under O'Neill and Giles right now without Pizzullo's influence. I mean, you know, I mean, Pizzullo <laughs> stopped the boats and kept us safe. I mean, and he deserves the AO for that alone. Um, but he was a, was a servant of the Labor Party many years ago, a fine public servant. Uh, he does not need to have this retrospectively done to him. And to your point, it's not a fraud or criminal act that he's undertaken. It was an error of judgment uh, that, that hurt no one in the end. Uh, and so, yes, it would be incredibly petty politics to remove this AO from him given how well he did in the service of this country. Mm. All right. Well, look, given how Albanese has been slipping in the polls, the City Morning Herald has done this big piece today on the candidates for Labor leader, the succession plan. Um, Andrew Carswell, what... I think is most disturbing about this report. Look, I've been reporting for a long time that Tony Burke considers himself a leadership candidate. I've said how ridiculous that is. But mm -hmm. the Herald today says that he's the next most obvious leadership candidate. What a joke. Well, Shari, it's a roll gold list of underachievement, um, this, uh, this article. Uh, uh, yes, he does uh, view himself as, as a future leader, but the problem is he's disliked by his own faction. Uh, I mean, you, you, you throw um, uh, Chris Bowen in the mix as well. He considers himself as a future leader. Tanya Plibersek as, as a future leader as well. Uh, mm. They've hardly covered themselves in glory in the last couple of years. Uh, the only one that really rises above the, the, you know, the mediocre pack here is, is the Treasurer, Jim Chalmers. I mean, he's the only one that can cut through I couldn't uh, agree to more. a degree couldn't where agree you can more. say I he's, think all he's three a potential of us would agree Minister. on that point. All three of us would probably agree on that point. Absolutely. I mean, he, he's, he's the master of the, of the one-liners. He can cut through. Uh, he, he's good on TV. Uh, he's very measured in the way that he approaches things. The rest, well, they can, they can take a number. Yeah. Cameron Milner, what, what do you think? Well, I'm, a, I'm an unavowed sort of, and big fan of Jim Chalmers. I think he'll be the next Labor Prime Minister. Um, uh, but that said, there are others in caucus as well. I mean, I've got a lot of time for Tanya Plebisic. I think she's very good. Michelle Rowland's excellent. Um, the next generation is represented by people like Andrew Charlton, who's demonstrating that wealth's no, no impediment to doing well inside Labor Party. Um, so, you know, there's a whole yeah. lot of people coming through. But the reality is that Albo won't choose his successor. The factions and the unions will choose the successor. Mm. Um, Albo will be long gone by the time the next leader is chosen uh, by the Labor Party and Labor Party machinery. And I think that's why Jim Chalmers will be an excellent choice when that time comes. Mm -hmm. All right. Andrew Carswell, Cameron Milner, thank you both very much for your time tonight.